Michael, Jeffrey, Jordan is the psych ass Russo's the fucking go. But on a real note though, the MJ versus LeBron. The debate to end all debates. Matter of fact, when you finish watching this video, I really don't want to hear shit. Like, I don't want to hear nothing. Because this is the debate to end all debates. You feel what I'm saying? So, before we get into the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more content. So, let's just go ahead and jump right into the good stuff. Now, if you are on Twitter and you browse NBA Twitter daily, what do you see all the time? LeBron versus MJ. MJ versus, MJ versus LeBron. LeBron is the go. MJ is the go. MJ sucks. LeBron sucks. But in this video, all we do is speak truth. I'm going to look at it through an objective perspective. So as you see on the screen, I have the various accolades that they were both players are able to accomplish. As you, as you can see, MJ six rings to LeBron's three. Finals MVP six to LeBron's three. MVPs five to LeBron's four. Defensive player of the year, MJ one to LeBron zero. All NBA, MJ's 11 to LeBron's 15. So LeBron won that category. All first team defensive, MJ nine to LeBron's five. Scoring titles, MJ 10 to LeBron's one. And then we also have all-star MVPs. Both of them were able to collect three all-star MVPs over the course of their careers. So that's just accolades. That's just, you know, the counting, counting measures, you know, stats, accolades that they were able to achieve over their careers. So let's go ahead and start getting to the down and dirty. Let's get into the, to the meat of the bun, so to speak. You feel me? So let's go ahead and start breaking it down. Let's talk offense, offensive side of the ball. Basketball has two sides, but let's talk about offense first. MJ was a 10-time scoring champion. He led the league in scoring 10 times to LeBron's one, and I, I believe that was in 07. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. Yeah, I love doing that anyway. MJ averaged more than 30 points per game in eight seasons, seven times, so seven of which were consecutively. LeBron has only averaged over 30 points per game once in his career. MJ had equivalent field goal percentage to LeBron despite playing in a more physical era. So, you know, hand checking was allowed, you know, the rule before the rule change. And he was a smaller player. He wasn't as big as LeBron. Still managed to average about the same field goal percentage from the field. MJ against the big three Celtics in the playoffs as a as a damn as a pup. Second year in the league, 1986, dropped 43.7 points per game on one of the greatest teams ever assembled, that being the big three Boston, Celt Boston Celtics, my fault. Well, you know, Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, you know, Kevin McHale, all those boys. Now the idea, let's go break, let's break down to the myth that MJ was just some inefficient ball hog who didn't pass the ball. Look, MJ for his career was 36 and five. LeBron for his career was 27, seven and seven. So if that, you know, one assist difference really, you know, does it for you, then I really just don't know what to tell you. You feel me? One on one season, MJ averaged 35, eight and eight. In fact, at the end, towards the end of one season, they put MJ in at point guard. He had 12 triple doubles. So I, but I mean, I guess MJ was just some inefficient ball hog. You know what I mean? Who cares about stats, right? Boy was just ball hogging. Now let's go ahead and talk about defense. See, LeBron fans, LeBron stands, LeBron sexuals, whatever you want to call them, they don't like when we talk about defense around here. They, they really get mad when we talk about defense. MJ, let, let's go into why MJ was better on the defensive end of the ball. Remember earlier I said there was two sides of basketball? I don't know if y'all knew that. But on the other end of the ball, defense, MJ, first team, all defensive, nine times LeBron's five. MJ was Defensive Player of the Year as one of only four guards in NBA history to ever accomplish such a feat. He was one of four players ever, so four players period, to win Defensive Player of the Year while also receiving the MVP at the same time. So this goes to show you that MJ actually cared about both sides of the basketball, unlike your boy Braun does. Now he has been playing a little bit of defense this year, so we are going to give him credit for that. But, his, but come on now, 2018, 2017, boy act like defense doesn't exist. MJ's second all-time in steals. LeBron is like one millionth. Uh, first team all defensive at age 34. LeBron at age 34 didn't know how to spell defense. And MJ locked up Magic in the 91 finals. Don't let people get it twisted. People say, oh, uh, Magic torched MJ in the game one of the NBA finals. He dropped the triple-double on him. Well, actually, MJ picked him up full court, and MJ guarded him so well, Magic only scored on him one time. So, you know, know your facts. And also, let's not even mention the fact that MJ led the league in steals on three separate occasions. 
So there's really no way you can say that M that LeBron was anywhere near as relentless or as gifted as a defender as MJ was. It's simply not true. And LeBron fans will literally sit there and try to tell you that LeBron's a defender, better defender, but they have nothing to back that up. The accolades don't show it. The stats don't show it. Defensive win shares, defensive ratings, none of these things support LeBron being the, the better defender. The only thing that supports it is these bronze sexuals, these bronze stands, who try to tell you anything. They'll literally tell you anything at the top of their head just to make you believe them, and they just simply don't be true. They be lying and their mom's a hoe but let's go ahead and get to the deeper let's go ahead and go deeper into this analysis let's talk about clutch let's talk about playoffs look mj for his career averaged 33.4 points per game in the postseason which is also the most which is the highest average by any one player in the postseason mj has that record mj in the playoffs has averaged more points more steals less turnovers better free throw percentage better field goal percentage better three-point percentage and a better higher per percentage than one lebron james i don't know why it's a per percentage that doesn't exist it's just per player efficiency rating in game seven so this is game seven you know the biggest moment of the playoffs right mj has averaged more points more assists more blocks shot better from the field better from the free throw line and let's talk about clutch shots so game winning shots in the game seven so in the clutch biggest shots of the game my man's lebron is zero for six in the finals on clutch shots my man's mj is four of eight now i don't know about y'all but four of eight sounds a lot better than zero of six that's just me though i don't know what y'all think you know let me know in the comment section but let me know but four of eight to me that sounds a lot better you know what i mean now let's go ahead and talk about blunders. Let's talk about the black marks in, in, in LeBron's career that hold him back significantly in this argument. Now this is where Bron stands or Bron sexuals, whatever you want to call them. This is where they get really butt hurt. This is where they get salty. This is where they get upset. My man's Bron lost in the 2011 NBA Finals by averaging 17 points per game on 46% shooting. Are you serious? He was favored to make the finals twice and ended up missing it. So in two separate seasons, LeBron was favored to make the finals and didn't. Lost three playoff series in his career that he was favored to win. Couldn't guard Jason Terry in the 2011 finals. He got blown the hell out by Dwight Howard's magic in the playoffs. And let's not even forget to mention when LeBron's Miami Heat in 2014 got blown off the court by a record margin. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. My man's bronze Miami Heat got blown off the court by a record finals margin in 2014. Also, not to forget to mention, you know, because I don't want to neglect anything. I don't want to forget to tell any people at home listening about anything. That's not the type of guy I am. LeBron has missed the playoffs three times in his career, the first two years in his career, and he missed the playoffs last year as a Laker. My MJ, as a Chicago Bull, has never missed the playoffs. LeBron is such a better passer and always makes the right basketball decisions, but he has never assisted on a game-winning shot in the playoffs in his career. MJ has done such a thing when he hit the pass to Steve Kerr in the finals. Now, let's go ahead and talk about something LeBron fans don't want to talk about, and that's the fact that the only real reason why this is even in a debate is because LeBron left Cleveland. If LeBron had never left Cleveland, guess what? The Cavaliers would have never been bad enough to draft one Kyrie Irving. And if that's the case, LeBron never wins the title. So the only reason why this is ever even, even a debate slightly is because he left to go to Miami, crawled to Dwayne Wade's doorstep, and won two titles there. And by the time he came back to Cleveland, the Cavs had already drafted Kyrie Irving, and that's how eventually they go on to win the title. But wait, oh no, I forgot. Even if LeBron has stood on the Cavs since he's the GOAT, he would have just beaten everybody by himself. But that's obviously not what would have happened. Come on, let's use common sense. So like I said before, the only real reason why this is even a debate is because like I said before, LeBron went to Miami. He won two championships over there. And by the time he got back to Cleveland, there was already a, an established star there in Kyrie Irving. And he had Kevin Love coming along for the ride. Now that's pretty much all for the video, guys. Look, MJ is clearly the best player of all time, in my opinion. LeBron is the second best player of all time, but there's just literally no way you could say that MJ wasn't better than LeBron because MJ was better than LeBron. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. This is your boy Edwin from NBA Talk signing off. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.